Hey guys, what's up? This is Kazi from CleverProgrammer.com. We've got a pretty fancy new setup. Hopefully you guys love it. Uh, let us know in the comments below what do you guys think. But in this video, we're going to be talking about am I too old to start coding or to start computer programming? This is one thing that always excites me because people are always trying to find all kinds of excuses to not do it. So in this video, we're going to tackle this question. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So this question comes up a lot. Hey, Kazi, am I too old to start computer programming? Now, this is a question I've answered in many different uh, videos, but I'm going to answer it here as well, uh, along with some other common, you know, things that people have, which is, am I, you know, smart enough to actually code, or do I need to, do I know enough math to become a computer programmer? So first, let's just start off with, you know, am I too old to start computer programming? And, you know, the answer there is, Unless you're physically incapable of actually coding, I don't think you're too old to actually start coding. You know, even even if you're 60 years old or 7 years old, the beauty about this skill is you can learn it and you don't need to physically exert yourself, right? It's actually just understanding memory, intelligence, things of that nature. And as you get older, you actually become smarter, right? Believe it or not. And a lot of the times your memory actually becomes stronger. That's why you'll see a lot of old people have like thousand different stories that, that they remember and that they can tell you word for word. Whereas I always have trouble remembering stories. So um, I'm, I'm younger and my brain actually, you know, uh, from the psychology perspective, hasn't even fully developed uh, till I'm 25 years old. So if you're older, you're actually at an advantage. The only disadvantage you have is time. Because, you know, if you're if you're 60 years old or 50 years old and you're you're maybe like, "Hey, can I actually switch to computer programming and then start making enough money and actually start getting promoted at my job where I'm actually able to have a significant career?" You don't want to just be in that weird zone where you're not getting any promotions and you're just mediocre there or maybe you don't even get a job so uh, let me talk you through that one now what happens when you become a computer programmer or you start learning this skill it doesn't take that long if you can invest a certain amount of time every single day which you can you know easily open up you can find that time I go deeper into that in how long should you code every day and what are the best coding resources it's a video I recently made and in that one I really tell you how you can find time but in this video let me just tell you in a simple way after you're done sleeping and after you're done going to work and after you're done you know spending time with your kids and your wife or your husband whatever you always have a few hours left that you can choose to invest into Netflix or maybe you just want to like relax and hang out or you can invest that time actually into coding and you can turn it into something that you do fun and it's like a ritual so as long as you can actually practice this it shouldn't take you that long to actually start you know to get a job and this shouldn't even take you a year it should take you less and you can actually get a significant paying job you know average developer salary is over 70 or eighty thousand dollars a year depending on where you're at in Chicago people who are doing Python are making over ninety thousand dollars a year on average regardless of their age here I have a comment I don't know how old Catherine is but it's a really awesome comment by Catherine Brown in my recent video and she said and this is actually surprising to me because I didn't know I had this audience watching my videos um, and she says, I'm a mom of three and a devoted housewife. I'm just starting, but I've been putting in five hours a day while my kids are at school and while my husband works. I have enjoyed your enthusiasm while doing your Python course and really think you're doing a great job explaining things in a way I can understand. Thank you. So first of all, mom, thank you so much, Catherine. 
Um, I did not know that somebody, you know, uh, a mom would be watching my material because it's like so crazy all over the place. And I felt like most people, uh, spe especially people who are older and are really mature, would probably just like lose me. Like, who's this crazy kid? Why is he so excited about coding all the damn time? So thanks actually for watching it and also for letting me know that you're there because I didn't think that this is this was another type of audience that I had watching the videos. But more importantly, the takeaway for you guys here is I don't know how old she is, right? But one thing that I can't tell is how smart she's being in terms of like finding time. I mean, she has three kids, right? And is a housewife and always working on that. I know my mom is like that and she has like no time available in the day. Ever since I was growing up with my mom, like she was always busy just like taking care of us kids and she never had time. But Catherine managed to find time, right? When her husband goes to work and when the kids are maybe somewhere else, she's investing five hours a day. Now that's a crazy amount of time. That's awesome if you can do that. You know, I was investing 17 hours a day, but again, when I was starting out, I didn't have, you know, kids to take care of and I didn't have insane amount of commitments. So it was a little bit easier for me. That's why I invested so much time. But, you know, you can take a lesson from her that you can also figure out how you can invest this time, right? And if you're smart about it, trust me, there is time there. You just need to dig it out and be smart about it. These little 30 minute rampages of Facebook news feed that you'll go to, right? Or Instagram news feed, they start adding up throughout the day. And here's one weird thing that happens with them. When you go for five to 10 minutes to just like look at your notifications on your phone, it's not just that it takes up exactly five or 10 minutes of your time. What it also does is that when you're driving and you're walking around or you're doing whatever, your brain is actually filled with the news feed. So instead of thinking about maybe coming up with some brilliant ideas or letting your brain just like come up with creative, unique ideas, your brain is thinking about, you know, Shaniqua's latest post that got 20 likes and she was having a fight or some kind of crazy drama going on, right? So it's nothing productive happening and your brain is thinking for hours about something that's not productive uh, and something that's just like holding you back. So even though you're spending five minutes, it's affecting hours worth of your thinking every day. Now let's replace that and let's say you have a simple app on your phone like Solo Learn, which is a really great app uh, for people who are trying to pick up coding or Python or whatever. And let's say instead of uh, you know spending five minutes on Facebook, you go five minutes and just play with that app and try out a new cool coding thing. Well, guess what happens? Now when you're walking around and you're driving, you're thinking about, oh, conditional statements or if-then statements or you know, how do I do this cool thing that I just learned? Now you're thinking about programming. So even when you're driving around or whatever, that time is actually being invested into coding and you're developing an interest for it. So that allows you to actually get into this field a lot quicker. And especially if you're older, this is how you can hack your way to get more time. Some other things I like to do to just, you know, get interested into this field. Well, um, if I'm driving, I'll be listening to a podcast that has to do with computer programming. Or I'll have a book on Audible that has to do with computer programming. So replacing your music with something related to this can also help you achieve and learn all this a lot faster. So again, there's no such thing as am I too old. If you're literally physically incapable, um, then yes, you, then it's not the right fit for you, right? And I'm talking about like maybe your hands just literally don't work. But if you're in a situation where you can actually understand what's going on, um, and, you know, even if you're 60 or 70 years old, you can pick this up and you can actually become a freelancer on websites like Upwork or Odesk. Or you can choose to go the traditional route and try to find, you know, full time work. Some other things that come up are, am I not smart enough to do coding? And this is something I've already mentioned. But again, I am not the smartest person. You know, I myself got a really low score even on ACT, which is a standardized test in high school. But I am here now and I am doing computer programming and I constantly get new job offers. I constantly am getting new clients. I'm constantly getting new people that I coach in computer programming. So 
you know, and, and it didn't take me long to pick up computer programming. I was getting paid within three months of picking it up. Let me repeat that. I was getting paid within three months of picking up computer programming. I didn't have a, I didn't have a full-time job, but I did find clients who I was coaching and they paid to learn from me. So that's something that you can do as well. Right, You can find people who you can coach. That way, you're solidifying your understanding. And secondly, you're also obviously getting paid. So now you have to do less work at your current job. And that can also give you more time. Because now if you start getting paid with coding, all of a sudden you have more time. Because you can reduce the amount of hours you're putting into your current job, increase the amount of hours you're putting into programming and getting paid from programming. So that's another hack for finding more time. Programming is something that you can pick up very quickly. You can pick up a job in it very quickly, but it's not easy. So you do have to invest that time in, okay? So the video I will recommend to you to watch after this is how long should you code every day and what are the best resources for you to practice. So go ahead, watch that video, and that's it for me. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you love this new setup. Comment below. And uh, as always, I love your faces off, and I'll see you in the next video.